Hey everybody, I'm Gwen and welcome to At Home with Gigi. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I have a big treat for you. We're going to be kicking off the Memorial Day holiday and 4th of July holiday with a huge compilation video of some of my favorite patriotic DIYs. These DIYs are so easy to do and so affordable. It's Dollar Tree items or clearance stuff from Michaels and Hobby Lobby. So I cannot wait to share them with you. So let's get started. I can't wait to show you this DIY. We are making a door hanger using a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree and this placemat from the Dollar Tree. And I just measured off the amount that I would need to cut off from the outer edges of the placemat, but because this is from Dollar Tree, it's not exactly even, so I did have to keep trimming it up just a little bit, and it's still not quite perfect, but that's okay. We're going to cover that up with some rope. And no, I didn't dump that on the floor. There's a trash can there. <laughs> I just kept going back and trimming it off until I got it to pretty much the size that I wanted. And I just took my pizza pan outside, spray painted it with the Krylon white, and let it dry. And then I'm just going to hot glue my placemat down to the pizza pan. And be careful that hot glue does seep up through there, so I burnt my fingers a couple of times. Then I'm just going to go around and use some rope and cover up those ragged edges of the placemat. And please excuse my big head. After cutting that end off of the rope, I just added a little dab of hot glue and rubbed it in just to keep that rope from fraying. And I attached these two little wooden cubes with a mixture of hot glue and Gorilla Glue. Let that set up. And then I'm just adding a little more Gorilla Glue and hot glue to attach my truck. Then I just set that to the side and let it set up while I painted the word July and the number four. The number four that I'm gonna be using is actually meant to go on your house, so it has the two holes in it, so I just used hot glue, put just a tiny bit in each one, sanded it down until it was smooth, and then I am giving it two coats of the Waverly Chalk paint, and then I'm gonna go in and give it two coats of the Admiral Blue, because I want it to have really good coverage. These little sparkly balls that I'm going to be adding came from, I believe it was Michael's, and I think they had them for like 50% off. And my idea for adding these, I wanted it to look like there was either balloons or fireworks just bubbling up out of the back of the truck. And then once I got started adding them, I couldn't stop. I just kept adding and adding. And, oh well, I just think they look really festive and just perfect for the 4th of July. I'm just adding some rope to the back so you can hang it up and a little messy bow to the front and we are finished. And that's it. I think it turned out so wonderful. I just love it. And just so festive and perfect for the 4th of July. And this is what it would look like if you just wanted to set it up as on an easel and not use it as a door hanger and that would work just fine as well. We're going to make a book stack using this crate from the Dollar Tree. 
the Apple Barrel in bright red and Admiral Blue and then Waverly Chalk Paint in white. And these three colors we'll be using throughout the video. I've gone ahead and given the crate one coat of Waverly Chalk Paint in white. Let that dry. Now I'm just taping off the center. And as you can see, I put on way too much tape, so I'll have to adjust that in a bit. But I'm going to, the white, the center rather, I'm going to keep as white. And then on the bottom, I'm going to paint a red strip. And then on the top will be the Admiral Blue. The letters that are laying there on the table, I decided not to use them because they were just too big for the crate. So I decided to use some that came from Walmart. And I wanted some white ones, so I didn't have any white ones. So yes, I painted them. I took some of the Waverly chalk paint and just went over them until I got the coverage that I wanted, set it aside, and let it dry. And while that was drying, I just cut off a little piece of ribbon that came from Michael's, I believe it is, just wrapped it around the end of the crate, and I'm just attaching it with just a little bit of hot glue. We're going to be adding the words stars and stripes to the crate and I've already put them, the letters or the words on the popsicle sticks. It just makes it easier for me to get them off because I'm so fat fingered so do whatever works for you. Now after these letters dried and I peeled them up some of them looked a little bit chippy and I'm okay with that to give it a little bit more of a used kind of worn look. But if that's not what you want, I would suggest looking until you find some white letters. But I didn't have any on hand and I was trying to get my projects finished, so I made do with what I had. This and sign, it came from the Dollar Tree and it's just one of their rub-ons. I want my stars at varying lengths. I'm just making sure that they're at the right lengths. And the little wooden stars that I'm using came from Amazon as part of a beaded wood, uh, garland. And y'all, these holes in the top of these stars is so teeny tiny, I like never got the string through. I had to use a needle. But anyway, they are just so adorable. I love them and I think they go perfect with this little project. And I'm just adding a little bow there to the top to cover up where I've attached the string. I wanted red ribbon, but the saga of over-organizing after my move continues, so anyway, I think it's still cute even with the little white bow, but if I can find my red ribbon, I will probably switch it out. For this DIY, we're going to use these wooden cubes from the Dollar Tree, some of the bright red apple barrel paint and the Admiral Blue apple barrel paint again and the Waverly chalk paint in white. And I'm gonna use just one of the single stars over there from that stencil that's laying there on the table. We're gonna be making candles out of these little wooden cubes and I'm just gonna paint three of them the blue, five of them red, and then four white. And I did give each set of cubes two coats just to make sure, because that wood I'm not even sure it's real wood, but whatever it's made out of, it really soaked up the paint. So I give them each two coats just to make sure they had good, solid coverage. Then after they dry, I'm just taking a stencil and I'm going to stencil a white star on each of the blue cubes. And then again, after they dry, I'm just going to take some of the wood glue that came from the Dollar Tree and then I'm just going to use my little brush and brush it on there and it sets up very, very quickly and then just stack them on there in the red, white, and blue pattern. I think I said that right. In other words, I want it to be red, white, red, white, and then with each one I want the blue to end on top. If that doesn't make sense, you can just see how I have them laying here. <laughs> to see my pattern. For my candle wick, I'm just going to use some of the, uh, I believe it's hemp 
stitch string from Walmart. I can't remember off the top of my head and I'm just cutting a tiny little piece and using some hot glue and attaching it to the top of my candle. So I can't decide, do they look like little miniature candles or do they look like little miniature fireworks? Let me know, but I think they're going to make a great addition to my dear tray. I found these awesome little bird houses at Walmart and when I saw them I was like, oh my goodness, they look like rockets and I knew that they would just be perfect on my tiered tray and I, I just love them and I think they turn out so cute. I can't wait to show you. And I decided that I wanted to paint the top of one of the rockets, birdhouse, blue, and then the bottom of it red, and then do the opposite for the other. And then I painted the center of the birdhouses white. And yes, I've told y'all I am messy, messy, messy painter, so I tape off the center to try and keep it as nice and clean as I can. And again, I'm just using the bright red color from Apple Barrel and then the Admiral Blue. I let the white paint dry completely, then I just went back and put a strip of painter's tape on each side. And I just went in, as you can see, I'm painting a stripe of red, just trying to make it look a little bit more like a rocket. At least I hope I did. And I just used another one of the stars for my stencil and just added a blue star to the center of each of the red stripes. This would be such a fun, fun project to do with your kids. And I think they are just absolutely adorable and it really doesn't take any time. The longest part is just waiting for your paint to dry. So tell me, did I succeed in making them look like little rockets? I can't wait for you to see them on the tear tray at the end. I just love them. For this project, we're going to be using these three dice from the Dollar Tree and the same color paint that we used in the other projects. But we're not going to be using that large bottle of the blue that's cobalt blue from Apple Barrel. Now, I did not have um, chalk paint in the red and the blue, and I was afraid it wouldn't, the acrylic paint wouldn't cover up the color of these dice, so I mixed in plaster of Paris to create my own chalk paint, and I think it did an awesome job in covering up those bright colors, but I did give each of them, even the Waverly chalk paint in white, two coats of paint just to make sure none of the original color of the dice were gonna show through. And once they have dried, I'm just going to go in and add a layer of Mod Podge on the top. And we're going to be using these stick-on letters, and you can find these at the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to be using the letters U, S, and A, of course. The U is a little bit large. I really should have trimmed that down just a little bit, but I'm okay with that. But if I had it to do over, I would trim it down some. I think these are so cute and they're just going to be a great addition to my tiered tray. For this DIY we're just going to make a sweet little sign for our tiered tray and I'm just going to use one of these little tiny canvases that came from Walmart and they come in like a packet of two or three and I've had these so long I don't remember exactly if it's two or three and then I'm also going to just add one layer of this bright red paint from Apple Barrel and let that dry completely. 
and then I'm just going to add a sticker that came out of that booklet of scrapbooking stickers that you've seen laying there. And then once my canvas is dry, I'm just going to add a layer of Mod Podge to my little sticker and then just position it on the front of the canvas and get it as centered as I possibly can. And then I'm just going to add another layer of Mod Podge over the top. After letting the canvas dry completely, I'm just going to place it into the back of the picture frame and it, as you can see, it just fits in there perfectly. It didn't need any hot glue or anything, it just stayed. And I'm going to add these two little stars that came in a packet of garland beads from Amazon. And that's it. It was just so quick and easy and I thought it was just adorable. I think it looks so cute on my tiered tray. If I would change anything, I think I would have left the canvas white because I believe that the sticker would have shown up better if it was a white canvas, but oh well, I think it's still pretty super cute. To make this wreath, I'm gonna be using a variety of greenery and flowers from the Dollar Tree, Walmart, and Michaels. And I'm going to be using an 18 inch grapevine wreath and my grapevine wreath came from Michaels but you can really use any size or I believe Walmart even carries them and Dollar Tree has some of the little skinny ones. I'm just going to go ahead and give this one a good clean up, snip off all those little scragglies that are sticking out. And I've already cut down my greenery as you can see and before I'm going to use hot glue I'm going to place my greenery in the wreath just to make sure I have my placement right because this wreath is going to be a gift to someone and I want to make sure I have it just right before I hot glue them in. Like I mentioned earlier, this wreath is going to be a gift and it's going to have to be shipped. So I want to make sure that my greenery is going to stay in place. So I'm going to use some of this heavy duty wire from Walmart and I'm just cutting it in half and as you can see just running it through the grapevine wreath and just twisting it around. But you're going to want to make sure that wire is flat and nothing sticking out so it doesn't scratch their door or your door if it's for you. I want this rose to be like my centerpiece and I'm just going to pop it right in the center and then work my other flowers out from there. And isn't this gorgeous? It looks so lifelike to me. And this came from Walmart and it was only just a couple of dollars. And I'm just going to add in some of these daisies and these also came from Walmart but I bought these a year, maybe two years ago and I bought two or three bundles and I am so glad that I did. I love to use these. They are just so pretty. For the blue, we're going to add in some of these blue hydrangeas and because they're so large, I'm just cutting them down and just going to place them around throughout the wreath. And these came from Amazon. As I've said many times, I live a good distance from a Hobby Lobby or a Michael, so sometimes it's just easier to order from Amazon. And I got these. They were a pack of 10 for like $10.99. And that is a really good deal for how large these flowers are. So I thought the wreath needed a little more red, so I'm just adding in some of these poppies, and these came from Michaels. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the wreath with just some bits and pieces of greenery and flowers, and I love these little sprigs that I'm placing in the wreath right now. They are just so pretty, and these came from Michaels.
I really felt that the wreath needed just a little bump of color, so I found these blue flowers in my stash, and these came from the Dollar Tree, and I cut them down and placed them around in the wreath just to see what they would look like before making the commitment to hot gluing them in, but I thought that it was just the perfect little extra touch. You're gonna have to let me know what you think. I really am loving how this wreath turned out. I think my sister is going to absolutely love it, and it's just the perfect wreath for Memorial Day or the 4th of July, and it was just so very easy to make. This DIY is so simple and easy and just a cute, inexpensive way to create some coasters for the summer. I'm showing you these USA napkins, but we're not going to use those. We're going to use these, the flag napkins, and four of the palettes from the Dollar Tree. I originally tried to attach the napkin directly to the palette, but that didn't work out so well, so this is a different palette. So I ended up cutting four pieces of cardboard, and I'm going to attach those using Mod Podge to the palette, let that dry, and then we'll move on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and apply a pretty generous layer of Mod Podge to the top of the cardboard and then we'll attach our napkin. After I get my napkin positioned like I want it, I'm just using my fingers to smooth out any air bubbles and any excess Mod Podge that might be up under there. I want it to be as flat and smooth as possible. After letting all four pallets dry, I cut off the extra napkin and then now I'm just using a piece of sandpaper and I'm just sanding off any of that excess that might be hanging over the edges. I think these turned out just so cute and they were just very, very easy to make. So instead of floral foam, we're going to use great stuff to insert all of our greenery and flowers. I've never used this before and I've been wanting to use it after seeing Damon over at Deco Exchange and I'll list his video below. He gives a great do's and don'ts on how to use this stuff. Now I'm just going to very slowly point this into my basket and then just start going around and circling. You do want to do this very slowly because if not this stuff will come out and go everywhere. And you want to be very careful and as you can see I've protected my surfaces with plastic. I have put plastic inside the basket because I want to be able to reuse this basket. Y'all know I like to reuse my stuff and if I don't do that this great stuff will adhere to the basket and will never come out again. I just want to mention, you want to make sure you do not touch this stuff, guys. Just use a little common sense and you'll be just fine. I left this set up for about 48 hours, and this is what it looks like when I removed it from the plastic. Now, the top is very spongy like floral foam, but the bottom is very hard. And as you can see, it was kind of loose when I put it back in there, so when I flipped it over, it fit better. But this created its own issues, but I'll tell you about that in a second. For my greenery, I'm going to be using greenery from the Dollar Tree, from Walmart, and I will also add in bits and pieces that I had left over from other projects. As I mentioned a moment ago, this shiny surface of the Great Stuff created a little bit of an issue. It just made it, it was harder than the other side of it, which is really spongy to insert my greenery, but you just have to use a little more pressure and it works just fine. And aren't these flowers gorgeous? I've reused them several times over the last couple of years. And y'all, I cannot remember what the name of these gorgeous flowers are. So if you know, drop it down in the comments down below for me.
Aren't these poppies just the sweetest? I think they are so pretty. And these came from Michael's last year as well. And guys, just a little tip to make your arrangements look high end when you're using Dollar Tree or even some of the Walmart greenery and flowers. Take flowers from Hobby Lobby and Michael's and get them when they're on clearance or on sale for 50, 60, 70% off and add them in. It makes your arrangement look so high end. For the blue, we're just going to add in some of these little thistles that came from Walmart. They were only a couple of bucks each and I thought they were just a fun addition to the arrangement. And I'm just going in and filling in the empty spots with some more of this, I think it's wheatgrass and this also came from Walmart. And because I forgot to add it in earlier, I'm just going to add in my moss just to cover up that spray foam. I don't know why I always forget to add this in, but I do. We're just going to make a quick little bow using uh, three different types of ribbon. And again, all of these came from Michael's. Last year I hit it at the perfect time. They were having their clearance sale after the 4th of July. And y'all, that's when I like to stock up on my ribbons and florals and things like that. I hate to pay full price for any of my crafting items. I'm going to use a zip tie to cinch my ribbon there in the center. You can use a pipe cleaner if you prefer, but I find that you can really get it a lot tighter, at least for me anyway, using a zip tie. Just clipping off that excess there in the back and just fluffing it up and seeing how I want it. And I'm just going to take another little piece of the smaller ribbon and then just wrap that around the center to cover up that zip tie. So I needed a way to attach my bow to the basket, so I decided to use a bamboo skewer and I'm just cutting it down to the right size and then I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue it to the back of the bow. You're going to want to make sure that you give your bow a good fluffing. Just The trick to a good bow is just to keep working with it and just keep fluffing it until you get it exactly how you want it. And let me tell y'all, that can take me a minute because I am never satisfied with my bows. Y'all, I think this has turned out so pretty and only one thing left to add is just the flag and this came from Walmart and no, I didn't cut it down. I was in a hurry when I ran in and picked this up and didn't realize it was broken, but it just happened to be just the perfect right size to fit right here in this little spot and I, I'm loving this. I think it is just so pretty and just perfect for the Memorial Day and the 4th of July. It had finally stopped raining and the wind was cooperating and just a gentle breeze for my flag and y'all I couldn't ask for a better spot or a better view of this beautiful basket outside on my front porch. Y'all let me know what you think about it. For this project, we're going to need three of the glass vases from the Dollar Tree. We're also going to be using those little stars that's laying there on the table and some burlap ribbon and the burlap ribbon that I'm using came from Walmart. I'm just going to go ahead and cut three strips because I'm going to put them around each of my vases. Mm -hmm. 
I want the edges of my ribbon to have a more frayed look so I'm removing the wire on each side and then I'll go back and pull a couple of threads loose on each side of the ribbon and it'll give it that frayed look that I'm looking for. Next I'm just going to go in and hot glue the ribbon to each of the bases. I'm going to go ahead and cut the USA stars apart and then we're going to save the flag for a later project. And then I'll just go ahead and hot glue them to each of the vases. I've already added moss to the inside of my vase. Now I'm just going to add some flowers. And I'm using a combination of flowers that came from the Dollar Tree and Walmart. And these blue thistles came from Walmart. And so did these really pretty white daisies. These white daisies I've had for quite some time. I think probably for a year or two. And I don't know if they still have them this year. But I thought they were just so pretty and just be the perfect for the red, white, and blue. And then I'm just adding a variety of greenery into the vase as well. As you can see my flowers are flopping all over and looking kind of pitiful so I am going to go in and add some more moss to help it set up a little better. You could also use floral foam if you wanted but I didn't want to do that because you can see through this vase in certain areas. I think these turned out so cute and they were just so easy to make and it's very versatile. You could use any flower that you may have on hand. For this DIY, we're going to be using this plastic wreath form from the Dollar Tree. That is, if I can ever get all this tinsel removed, because I tell y'all, this was a chore. This is just going to be a very simple wreath. I've taken one of the scarves, I folded it in half, then I folded it in half again. Then I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach one end of the scarf to the wreath form, and then I'm just going to wrap it around the wreath. Once I got to the end of the scarf, I just folded each side in on itself, as you can see what I'm doing here, and then just, again, just folded it over and used a little bit of hot glue and attached it to the back of the wreath. I had originally planned to leave that little tab on to hang the wreath up by, but it just wasn't working with the scarf, so I just went ahead and snipped that off. And as you can see, I'm just wrapping the scarf around in the exact same way that I did the first scarf.
This was just such a quick and easy little project to do and you can literally use any color scarf, any color ribbon for whatever season and it would just add just a quick and fun little decorative accent to your home and I just had so much fun creating this and whenever I made this everything was still a dollar so it literally took three dollars to make this little cute wreath. I had originally planned to go with the flag that you saw at the beginning of the video and then I changed my mind and decided to add one of these little signs that's also from the Dollar Tree and then I'm just going to attach it with some hot glue. This was just such a sweet and fun little wreath to make and it took no time at all. This little project, I got the idea from a picture that I saw on Pinterest. They had jars that had picture of the flag on it and little candles inside and it was going up their steps on their front porch and I thought it was just so pretty. So I got three jars from Dollar Tree and the flags came from Walmart and you get four in a pack for I think it was like a dollar ninety seven. I know it was less than two bucks. And I just removed the poles from three of the flags and I'm just gonna put a generous coating of Mod Podge here on my jar and then just apply the flag to that. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can always try using the spray adhesive the Dollar Tree carries. I do use that a lot, but I thought with the type of material that these flags are made out of, the Mod Podge might work a little better, but I still had a little bit of a struggle getting the flag to adhere to these jars, I had to go back several times and add more Mod Podge, especially around the edges of the flag. They just did not want to stay down. So if you try this project, you might just want to be aware of that and just know that you're gonna have to put a good deal of extra Mod Podge along the edges. And I just went back with my fingers, as you can see here, and trying to smooth it out. And I will go back in a little bit and add another layer on top of the flag. It did not come out perfect, but I thought they came out really cute and I was really pleased with it in the end. But you do have to work just a little bit to get those edges to lay down. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process on all three of the jars. On this one, as you can see, I put a little bit of a thicker coating of Mod Podge, hoping that that would help it to adhere a little better. Again, these are really easy and simple to make. This would be a good craft to do with your kiddos. It doesn't involve a, a hot glue gun or anything like that. They would have a lot of fun getting their fingers all sticky because you definitely get sticky with this Mod Podge. But this is how I use them on my little tablescape. I used two of them for with candles and the other one I put some straws in it that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree on my little red tray over there. I thought they were just really, really cute.
For this project, I'm using my little white truck that I've had for about three years. This came from QVC, and I'm going to use the two floral foams that I have placed in the bed of the truck, and I'm just using some leftover greenery that came from Walmart. This is their eucalyptus bushes, and it's already been cut down because I've used it in other projects. I'm just recycling it here, and I'm just going to fill that foam up I'm just gonna fill it up with this green because I want a really wild lush green look in the back of my truck here and I love my truck I decorate this thing every holiday every season that comes around and I've had all this green laying around and some extra odds and end flowers and I had picked up a package of the table scatter from the Dollar Tree and I'm like I am gonna figure out something to do for Memorial Day. And so I decided to just start placing all this greenery in there and just see where it took me. And I know I say it with almost every one of my projects, but this really is something you can make your own. You don't have to use any specific greenery or any specific flowers. You can just use whatever you happen to have on hand. And I'm also adding in a few little pieces of this wheatgrass, and I believe that also came from Walmart. I got this back in early, early spring, maybe even the end of February when they had it out. And I thought it was just so pretty. And again, I'm just filling it in with the different flowers that I have on hand. These little flowers came from the Dollar Tree. And unfortunately, I was only able to find just one stem of them, but I thought they were so pretty. I'm telling y'all, this year, Dollar Tree has really knocked it out of the park with their greenery and their florals. I'm just continuing on with my red, white, and blue theme here by adding in these pretty little blue flowers. These also came from the Dollar Tree. I know it's looking a little wild and crazy here from this angle, but just hang in there with me. I promise the end will make sense. But then again, this year, the wild overgrown flower bed look just seems to be my thing. I am just loving it. I decided to add in this little pick that I got from the Dollar Tree that I removed it later and went with something else. I was trying to give it a little bit of height and the little straw on the end, it just did not want to stay in my floral foam. And these are the little red flowers that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. They are not of the best quality, as you can see. Some of the little flowers are laying there on the table. I had to keep putting them back together, and a few of them I had to hot glue together. I'm just going to use some bamboo skewers with this table scatter. I could not find my long green floral stems that I get from Walmart until after I finished the project, of course, but I'm, so I'm just using these bamboo skewers because I just felt that my project needed a little bit of sparkle and shine. You can't create something for Memorial Day or the 4th of July and not have any sparkle and shine. So I wanted these stars in there like it was just shooting out of my flower arrangement. I think I accomplished that. Now I'm just going to attach my flag to this dowel rod that I'm going to cover with the green floral tape from the Dollar Tree because I don't want the wooden rod to stick out. I want it to blend in with my green in the back of the truck. Just keep twisting it all the way down. 
And I did have to use a just a tiny bit of blue at the start of the tape and at the end because for whatever reason this floral tape did not want to stick to that wooden dowel. And all that's left is just to glue the dowel to the back of your flag. Just make sure you use enough of the hot glue that is going to stay in place. After I kind of eyeball it here and get it in the center, then I go back on each side of the dowel and add a little more hot glue just for added security and stability. If you're going to make something like this and have it outside in the sun for any significant amount of time, you might want to consider using E6000 or something like that to keep it from falling apart. And this is what it looks like, guys, all together with a beautiful flag flying. Looks like it's flying in the wind and the stars just shooting out of the back of the truck. I, I love how it turned out. Comment down below and let me know what you think. The roads that lay open on their knees When the old one's gone on the night And I can I just love how festive everything looks. I just took a tablecloth from the Dollar Tree and spread it over my picnic table in the backyard and then just added the items that I had created and then there's other items from my home and for a very small amount of money you can have a beautiful festive table setting to enjoy with your friends and family. I just want to say thank you so much for sticking around. If you're here at the end and have watched all of my patriotic DIYs, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. I hope that you will comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite or if you'll be recreating any of them. And give me a big thumbs up if you will. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's absolutely free and it helps my channel so much when you like, comment, and share. And I truly appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye.